originating from the podcast studio inside FAM 360's headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast. The Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast is designed to encourage, equip, and inspire our audience through a combination of inspirational stories and real life experiences shared by other successful and skilled leaders in a variety of occasions. We hope that the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast empowers each one of us to step out, step up, and ultimately thrive as leaders. Now here's our host, Mr. Matt Maloney. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Above and Beyond Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Matt Maloney. I'm excited to welcome back in the studio today my friend and author of Everyday Leadership, Mr. Brian Unell. Yeah, it still sounds weird to be called an author. Does it? Mm -hmm. Does it sound weird? (laughs) I know. It's like, wow, I'm really really an author. I really wrote a book. Hey, it it recently released, so it's, it's pretty exciting. So for those of you that were not able to tune in yet to the last episode, I encourage you to hit pause, go back, listen to the first episode with Brian. On that episode, we learned about his illustrious career in healthcare um, and really that kind of that maturation process of how he became a leader of uh, some very large health systems one being right here in the Atlanta area. And then we dove into kind of what led him through this journey to leave the healthcare space and specifically running a large hospital in their revenue cycle to writing a book. And it was a, a culmination of 10 years worth of notes and ideas and information and things that he had compiled. And uh, one day it just led to uh, him writing a book, which ultimately became what is now t- uh, to be known as um, Everyday Leadership, You Will Make a Difference. We talked a lot about the book in the last episode. We talked a lot about leadership concepts, things of that nature. I think today I'd like the audience to learn a little bit more about the man behind the brand, Mr. Brian Unell. So we're going to do some rapid fire, some fun questions. Okay. So first and foremost, real easy icebreakers, favorite sports, uh, favorite sport and favorite sports team. Favorite sport right now would be baseball and the Atlanta Braves. Yes. See, this is why I like this guy. I know the Braves aren't in the postseason this year. A little bit of a hiccup, but they're next year. Next year's coming back. So, favorite hobby? Spending time with the kids. The days are long, but the years are short. Oh yeah, undoubtedly. And, um, undoubtedly. To be able to just spend time with them has been is priceless. Yeah, it it truly is. It's a tough one. So if your wife was sitting around a table with a bunch of her girlfriends or other people, how would she describe Brian Unell? What you see is what you get. (laughs) Oh, that's good. I like it. There's no mystery. It's pragmatic. It's straightforward. Hey. Probably blunt to a a fault. Yeah, like, but like your, hey, like your leadership book, right? It's very... Um, no, I wouldn't say blunt to a fault, but it's, it's uh, yeah. very plain English. It's very, what you see is what you get. Hey, this is, this are real life experiences rolled up and delivered too. So I, I love that. All right. Last question. How would teams of people whom you've led before over the years describe Brian as a leader? Hopefully the same way my wife did. Mm. Um, what's been really interesting with the book is the number of people who, either by choice or so let me back up. I have stuff. I believe people fire themselves in general. Sure. You set expectations, you communicate what they are. And if people can't meet them, then they have to get returned to the community. Right. But the number of people who found themselves in that situation and left the organization who have purchased my book, I find fascinating. Really? Yeah. I've just been fascinated by the number of people who have reached out and uh, people left who bought the book after, you know, yeah, that's interesting. Well, because you'd think the ones that thrive and would stay, et cetera, would be the ones, and there have been a number, don't get me sure, wrong, or sure. people who've gone on to bigger and better. Yeah. But the ones that, like, I was shocked that, and um, so it's been interesting to, that's good. to see that. And you, get, I hear a lot of feedback from folks who did leave the organization who, you know, give me, reach out every once in a while, like what you said, you probably didn't even realize and you helped. Not that we uh, necessarily live for validation, but that is, that's important as a leader, right? That you were able to get that from people whom you worked with and whom you led over the years. Um, because maybe you didn't know, like you said, that that person felt that way or thought that. 
And so I think yeah. that that's, that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. Well, let's, let's uh, refocus here on, I think uh, it'd be great just to share a little bit about your family to um, the, the audience. I mean, those that have read the book, you talk a little bit about some things with your family, but I think just, you know, quickly share about your family, um, children, what does that look like? Fortunately, I met my wife in grad school and mm-hmm. we started dating. And next thing you know, we um, we spent a month together, actually, after grad school, before we started work um, in Europe on a bus tour. And oh, she really? was able to put up with me for 30 days straight. And I'm like, if she can put up with me for this long, yeah. I've got someone special. Yeah, here. I got someone special here. <laughs> right. I mean, 24-7, yeah. nonstop for 30 days. And um, so very fortunate to be married now for... 21 years and counting. Congratulations. Um, yeah, we were married two weeks before September 11th. Wow. Yeah, 2001. And um, and then we've got two kids, a 14-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter. Okay. So wow. that's great. Big, big space in between there. You know, as we talked about in the previous episode, there was a lot of things that got in the way between yeah. work and life. And yeah. we always wanted to have a second. And, you know, for those of you who have kids or don't have kids, and you're always wondering when's the right time to have a kid. There never is a right time. Yeah. Uh, right. The answer is never. But you've, you know, our window is closing. We decided to jump out. And um, our older son is a great big brother. And there's no competition because they're so yeah. far apart. But um, yeah. And then they're so different. Right. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, I've got so, three kids yeah. and um, all three of the kids are really different. There's maybe some similarities to the to the youngest two in certain things. But there it's it's incredible how their personalities yeah. are different of course they look different and features and things of that nature and favor one you know one spouse versus the other one parent versus the other they both favor my wife let's be clear no oh, do they oh yeah <laughs> that she's much nicer and kinder and gentler yes. warm yeah well that's that's that is similar my my kids do definitely favor my wife so th- thank thank the lord yeah. well so speaking about children uh, one of the things that i find very, very important and I'm very passionate about is kind of building the future generation of leaders, right? And as an accomplished business leader, I think that uh, you and others look at it probably from a similar way. It's important that we pour into the next generation of leaders. And so, but, but going back to your childhood, do you recall, was there a person or a group of people that maybe had a profound impact on you um, in shaping the person that you became and ultimately you were thrust into leadership. Is there anybody that, yeah, that I, I'll start out? with my parents yeah. and, um, my parents were born and raised in Atlanta. Uh, my dad's parents came to Atlanta with nothing but a promise of a job. Mm. And, um, my dad wasn't even born yet. And they grew up and essentially there's been now four generations between my grandparents, my parents, us, and my kids wow. who have, somewhat relationships with people who grew up together that my grandparents knew. That's cool. And it's really a unique thing. Um, my dad was a very avid golfer. My dad passed away uh, about three and a half weeks ago. And so yeah. very fresh in my mind, you know, just the profound impact of the way he lived his life. And, uh, you know, there's so many stories I could tell mm. going to them now if we have time or not. But as an avid golfer, one of the quotes I found when I was doing the eulogy is Ernie Banks, who's a famous baseball yeah. player, said, yeah. you know, uh, ba- uh, baseball reveals character golf exposes it. Oh, and, wow. you know, you learn yeah. so much about life and just spending time with my dad on the golf course about yeah. respect and the way he treated people. And, you know, my coworkers, so um, we were, I walked into a meeting one day and my, the coworkers were talking to some folks that were in there before the meeting had started. And, um, they said they were talking about how they saw me interacting with a environmental services person in the hospital one day, how I was just talking to somebody. And they said that yeah, Brian is nice to this janitor as he is to the CEO. And one of my direct reports said, he's actually probably nicer to the janitor than to the CEO. <laughs> and they're probably right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, sure. everybody, everybody's nice to the CEO. Yeah. But, you know, the janitor gets no love. Yeah. And I always went out of my way when I was at the facilities to make sure that those frontline resources. And that was something that was important, important that your dad ingrained in you and treat everybody the same. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Treat everybody the same. It doesn't yeah. matter. Everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time. That's right. It doesn't matter who it is. And, yeah. um, so yeah, very fortunate to have had my dad set good, really good lessons. That's great. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear about his passing and, um, obviously he lived a great life and he impacted you and I'm sure countless others. So, uh, thanks for, thanks for sharing that. So when you, um, when you kind of look at, uh, 
all the things that you're doing right now. Are you working on another book? Are you, uh, I know you, you've said that, you, and I know you told me, we didn't talk about it on the podcast, but you told me independently that you've written, you know, several more chapters that yeah. just didn't get into the first book. So is, is, do you have an aspiration to release another book at some point? I know we're just on the precipice first of releasing this one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ideally, yes. So the second book is essentially done. So the first book is really about how the leader, um, through their communication and mindset can make a difference. Yep. And as you talked about, very pragmatic yep. ways, little tiny tweaks that you can make. Yep. Um, the second book is really about building high performing teams and culture. So it's yeah. taking those same concepts and putting it outward into an organization. And again, to be genuine and authentic and to be what you talked about previously about it, not, not the right culture, but yeah. the right culture for that organization. Absolutely. And yes. um, so having that capability and to be able to take these same, you know, types of tweaks and not just, demonstrate them yourself, but demonstrate them outward for an organization yeah. and, or your family is important. And that's what the, the second book is about. Do you, I, I know you, um, you are leading an organization in the healthcare space right now, um, that's providing, you know, services, um, and digitally oriented payment services and other things to healthcare providers. But just curious, do you have, um, you know, aspirations at some point to, uh, you know, who knows where the book book thing goes, right? And, and, but to go back and, you know, build a leadership consulting firm or in anything like that? I mean, maybe, maybe not now, but have you thought about that? Yeah. One day at a time. I mean, I'm so fortunate to have crossed paths with a guy by the name of Darby Brown, who's a serial entrepreneur. And we were connected as one of those familial relationships that I mentioned. Um, it just somebody that knew me from here that moved to Nashville yeah. and connected me with Darby and Darby is just uh, an incredible human being and giving me an opportunity to basically take this company that he founded in 2016 and to basically take it to the next level. And so I've got nothing really else on my mind at this moment in time, other than yeah. taking the company to yeah. really build it, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. I, I love being able to do this stuff on the side as yeah. a hobby. Yeah. And to your point, being able to make a difference. Yeah. And Darby has been extremely supportive of that. That's and great. So, that's, that's big. Yeah. And so, you know, to go do a couple talks here and there and to help organizations or um, companies do things, um, you know, it, it re it re-energizes me and I learned something from it as well that I can always bring back. Yeah, of course. Right. So it's not just selfish that I'm going out and doing it because I learned something and, you know, can I come back and apply it to our company and our people and our teams and our clients as well? How with you being, you know, you're 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 a dynamic leader in terms of you know the organizations that you've been in. You're leading an organ a healthcare organization, um, you know, again, on the technology payments, payments, technology side of the business. Oftentimes, you know, there's an old saying it's lonely at the top. Right. Leaders are constantly pouring out their energy, their ideas. Um, you're, you're investing time with your people. You're helping solve problems, you know, in part, part of your day, maybe firefighting, right? Putting out yeah. fires and things of that nature. But um, when you look at yourself, what are some things that, and perhaps recommendations that you could share with the audience of things that, that you do to help yourself grow as a human being, grow as a, maybe it's grow as a leader, but also just grow and, and, and kind of reset, you know, that there, there are things that leaders need to do in order to maintain the pace at which we have to um, operate every day. What is it that Brian Unell does to, to make sure that he is, um, you know, at the top of his game? I have, I talk about this in the book that I think one of my strengths is curiosity uh, and I yeah. didn't realize it until I was doing some research for the book. And, but being curious is one of those constant things yeah. that I always try to do. And so what does that mean pragmatically or practically is in the morning when I'm exercising or before I'm exercising, I'm watching Fox news, CNN and MSNBC. Mm. And then I switch to the tennis channel because I want to watch it. Any, any of them anymore. Yeah. But like I try to get perspectives from everywhere. Um, so I read Harvard business review. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a professor out of uh, NYU school, Stern of business by the name of Scott Galloway, mm. who I find just extremely thought provoking. Um, I don't agree with everything he says or does. Yeah. Um, but I, I, try to put myself out and or try to find content that is going to make me think. Yeah. Not sure. that I'm going to take on the thoughts of those people, but try to make me think. And so that's where I try to go. And, um, it's hard to find because there's so much that is just entertainment now. No yeah. one's very yeah. few people out there trying to make you think Yeah, like all these news channels I just mentioned, they're playing content to attract an audience yeah. as opposed to educating the audience. 
hopefully the above and beyond leadership podcast is playing content that Absolutely. educates the audience. Right? Absolutely. And I've listened to about half of them. I have not made it through the other half. Okay, yet. Well, it's good. But I'm going to get through them, I promise. And yeah. I've enjoyed it because you have people yeah. on here, as, as your point, that help think about things in a little bit different way. You've yeah. come into leadership roles in a little bit different way. Yeah. It just get, it's, get, it's, get, it's giving, it's obtaining and giving perspective from different you know, philosophies and styles of leadership or just different life experiences, right? And 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 how that can hopefully inspire and-, and uh, well, The one episode people. about your parents was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Was, I mean, yeah. I, I met your mom in person for the time and yeah. I, I felt like, oh, I knew, I felt like I knew her, right? Yeah. Like, you felt like you like, know oh, somebody. I know you. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But the story and, the, and the, what people put in, as I was talking about my grandparents before, I mean, they came to Atlanta with nothing other yeah. than the promise of a job for my grandfather and they built a business called Atlanta Thread and Supply. Yeah. And- you know, I write about in the book how I was getting my suit tailored one day and there was a ruler on the ground that said Atlanta Thread and Supply. And it was, you know, gosh, a decade great? or more after my grandfather had sold the business. But, you know, the guy, the tailor knew my grandfather. That's amazing. And you just never I know. I love that. Yeah. And so the impact that you can have on people. Yeah, uh, th- th- it's, it's no doubt. And, and I, you know, I look back. I think, you know, we talk about this a lot uh, as, you know, Americans and honoring the, the, the generations that came before us and, and the things and the, the, the grit that was required and the hard work and just the sacrifice, the sacrifice. Uh, it mean, was, in, it was incredible. It really is I mean, incredible. And I hope we don't lose that as, a, as, as Americans. I hope we don't lose that as a world, I hope we don't, but I really hope we don't lose that as Americans. Yeah. Uh, just it's, it, it requires, um, uh, I mean, life is, life requires a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, let's shift gears. Do you, do you have a, a life motto, a quote, scripture, creed, what, you know, whatever that you live by or something that perhaps inspires you or empowers you? Yeah. It's uh, communications and expectations is 90% of success. It's uh, the title of the fourth chapter of the book. Yeah. Um, it's the first real chapter after you kind of get through the intros and the history of leadership and other things. But I firmly believe that, that I've seen some of the people do the best work in the world, but it's just not what others were expecting. Yeah. Or it didn't fit the culture or whatever reason. Yeah. And they're just seen as not being successful because of it. That goes back to the clarity thing we talked about on the first podcast of, of, you know, you brought two parties together. They both walked out of there feeling good. We were on the same page. They were going to have this frequent meeting, as I recall. And and one said, yeah, it's going to be every quarter. And they said, no, it's going to be monthly. Yep. <laughs> right. And, um, and and having the communication and the expectation uh, aligned, um, you know, is as you said, is 90%. That's great. All right. Let's, let's, um, let's have some fun. So we're not having fun. I'm having fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm having fun too. Yes. But let's have some more fun. So I like to do this on my podcast. I like to, um, hop back to 1985, get in the DeLorean with Michael J. Fox. We're going to go back in time and you're going to get to, uh, meet your younger self. And in that process, you're going to give your younger self a piece of advice what would you tell your younger self? So 1985, my friends and I were doing fantasy baseball at the age of 12. Oh, there you go. So believe it or not. Yeah. And we should have basically started a business doing rotisserie baseball or fantasy baseball then because we were on the cutting edge. No doubt. So that's what we should have done. The advice I would give myself though would be probably twofold. One is to take a little more risk. Mm. That's good. I'm not talking about going freestyle solo up a cliff or anything like that, but there are calculated risks. I'm, I have a personality where I'm probably overly loyal to a fault. And as a result, probably stayed in jobs longer than I should have for a variety of different reasons. And again, I don't have any regrets by any stretch. I'm fortunate as can be. Sure. Um, you know, I could have written this book in theory many years ago. Mm-hmm. So take more risks. Don't, don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. but one of the biggest concerns I had with writing the book was putting, putting myself out there for others to judge in a world uh, where it's so much easier to be a critic than it is to be a creator. Yeah. It is so hard to create. I mean, that is, and it's so easy, easy to be a critic. It is. Right? I mean, you got all the people that are that 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 want to sit on the sidelines. I mean, you've heard it say said different ways. It's easy from the cheap seats, you know, um, armchair quarterback, you yep. know, whatever. But you, know, you want to critique, but to create, I mean, first of all, it's the ultimate expression. I believe it's the ultimate expression for, you know, whether people are believers in God or not. But it's the ultimate expression of God as being a creator. But that's what we were. That's what we're here to do. Yeah, right? we're, I think whatever the purpose is, I believe that we are here to create 
right? And then then leave and, and do that creation, have an impact on other people's lives as we go through our life. And um, yeah, it is. It's the hardest thing to do to create, but it's so easy to critique. It is. And it's, and it's becomes a, you know, people are afraid to put themselves out there because of it. Mm. And so I think, you know, continue to be genuine, continue to be authentic and people can forgive that even if you make a mistake, so to mm -hmm. speak, right? Because you're just trying your best. Um, I probably also be more patient with other people, especially when I was younger in a lot of different ways, have, yeah. a, have a, you know, I like to move fast yeah. and, um, so have patience. Mm. The other thing I would say is celebrate more. I, mm. I'm That's the type good. of person who will climb a hill and then find the next one. I don't take time to celebrate. Yeah. And you know, one of the, the downsides was at Piedmont is I hired a team of people who were the same way. So we really had to be intentional about celebrating. Yeah. Because it was, it was go, execute, go, execute. execute. Yeah. And there's always stuff. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Wash, right. rinse, and repeat. And yeah. you're missing stuff along the way because there's so many other opportunities you can't even get to. Yeah. So you don't even feel like you have time to celebrate. So, but you need to celebrate. Yeah. That you resonates need to recognize with me, taking time to celebrate more and, and patience. But you know, that, that's something that, that comes more natural for some people and doesn't for others. Yep. And, and so it's things that, you know, we have to work at. So. As we wrap up here, final thoughts, final thoughts that you can share with our audience to perhaps maybe help them, encourage them on their journey and understanding how communication and mindset, which is the themes within embedded within everyday leadership, how they truly matter. What, what, what kind of final thoughts do you have that you want to impart on the audience with communication and mindset? Yeah, I said it a little while ago, the, the days can be long, but the years are short mm. and you never know when your time is up or someone that you love, it's time is up. And if you've got, um, fortunately, I don't have this. I mean, I've got a couple of places of people that I say I'd never work with again, but there's, you know, with my father's recent passing and fortunately we had an incredible relationship and never had any issues, but you realize that um, life's too short to be unhappy but at the same time, life's too short to hold grudges. Mm, that's and so true. It, it doesn't help you or help anybody else. And to really go try to get closure on things if they're, if there's open, you know, if there's things that are out there that you need closure on. Um, because otherwise it's baggage that you're carrying around. It's impacting yeah. you in ways that you realize and don't realize the relationships you have, the relationships you don't do. And so, you know, try to go get closure on things. That's good. That's what I would tell people. That's good. Thank you, Brian. Thanks so much for joining us. This was awesome. Um, I know that it was educational, both, uh, both episodes, educational for our audience, but also inspiring. Uh, I want to close with this quote from Brian within the book. It says, everyday leadership must be authentic, very simple, very clean and pragmatic. So thank you. And, and let me, let me just uh, wrap up by affirming you and saying again, what you're doing is outstanding. Um, don't lose sight of how, you know, one little thing in the book or one little conversation that you have and how it, it really is changing and can change the lives of other people. So congratulations on the success of, of launching the book. You took that step, you became a creator. And uh, I know it's going to be a successful book. So thanks again. And, uh, and, and by the way, uh, I, I, was, I, was, um, I wasn't joking earlier in that uh, Brian and I were talking about it, um, every year I give out books for, uh, for, for Christmas. And I think that this year's gift to uh, many of my uh, friends and family and clients and other people will be everyday leadership. So well, thank um, you. That's awesome. Yeah. Glad to hear it. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and congratulations on everything you're doing as well. Thanks. I, mean, I think that this is yeah. incredible. It's so hard to run a podcast. It is. I told people have told me, Oh, Brian, you should go do a podcast. I'm like, you have no idea what it takes to a podcast. It's, 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 it's tough. Thanks for you have this awesome team over here that knows exactly what they're doing. And, uh, yeah, well, you I'm do a great job with that. it and they do a great job with it. Well, so thank thanks you. for having me. Uh, for those that want to learn more about Brian, uh, you can go to his website at www.brianunell.com and uh, you can find more information about himself and, and the book, uh, Everyday Leadership. As we wrap up, to all of our subscribers and listeners out in podcast land, I hope today's episode was both empowering and inspirational. And as we journey out, I hope and pray that our daily journeys are filled with opportunity to lift others up as we aim to go above and beyond. Thanks, everyone. Our executive producer and host is Matt Maloney, president and CEO of FAM360. Strategic communication coordinator, Michelle Decato. Production assistance by Tin Dog Studios, director, John Berlund. 
Creative Assistant, Whitney Roland. Theme song, Connecting Dots by Curtis Cole, provided by Artlist. Please subscribe today and don't miss any of our weekly episodes.